So, hi, I'm Florian, and uh, I work for a company that's uh, engaged in autonomous driving, so I also work a little bit with AI, so I'd also like to talk to you. Today, I want to talk to you about three things. First, the global shapers in the capacity which I'm here today. Second, jobs, a very brief outlook of what I think might be happening to our society with jobs. And the third thing, uh, which I'm en uh, engaged with, through the Global Shapers, which is a coding school for kids who come from a weaker socioeconomic background. First, uh, who are the Global Shapers? Now, the Global Shapers is an organization that is um, under the patronage of the World Economic Forum. They have hubs all around the world, so probably similar to what 12 Minute Me wants to, or where, where it wants to get at. Um, in about, I think it's about 450 hubs all around the world. And basically what these hubs do in every city, they uh, choose their own projects, and in essence, they are, um, or they want to follow the, uh, the motto of the World Economic Forum, which is to be committed to improving the state of the world. And in every hub, that means different, uh, different uh, challenges, finding different solutions to problems, to just um, improving society. Now, Outlook on jobs, and this is the second thing I want to talk about, and I have a few slides on that. Um, what we are experiencing today is what we call sort of like the fourth industrial revolution. And um, for the first time in the history of maybe mankind, we are seeing a situation where technology might actually be destroying more jobs than it's creating. And now this has been said for a lot of times in the past, and um, in essence, well, it's always easier to predict how something is going to decline than to predict something new, some new jobs or what new jobs might be created. After all, 10 years ago, who would have thought that there would one day be a job, a job description called social media manager? But still, uh, a lot of jobs which are very repetitive and which have repetitive tasks are susceptible to uh, artificial intelligence, to automation, and, well, in the end, to kicking people out of jobs. Now, one very interesting thing is that 90% uh, of the U.S. workforce, this is a U.S. statistic, um, it's the only one I got on that topic, uh, still have the same job title as they had 100 years ago, which might be an indication that, after all, not so much has changed. But the difference is what I see, or what I think the problem lies, is that a lot of the technological advancement that we have um, devalues work. It has a de-skilling effect on work. That means that a lot of jobs which had once, or which once required a very high level of skill, um, will through technology be or require a much lower level of skill. Which in essence means that um, people with, with a uh, much worse education will be able to fulfill those jobs and um, just to like give you a few examples, um, back in the day, you know, cashiers, they had to be very skillful at typing and, and, and weighing and, and stuff. Nowadays, it's a barcode. They just go beep, 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 you know. So it's much simpler task. And for much simpler task, well, economic theory tells us we will pay them less money. And in the end, now, some people are saying, hey, it's not going to be that bad. There's actually going to be more jobs through technology. The question, I think, however, is um, what will these jobs be like? Because if we have a lot of jobs which, are very, uh, which require very low level of skill and which are very low paying, then um, those people won't be able to make a living of that and then we'll have a problem for society, along with the people who get kicked out of jobs due to technology. So in the end, I came up with this, um, well, kind of simple, but I think, uh, well, good graph that we're going to have a certain number of jobs in our economy and there's going to be one path at the top which is going to require a lot more skill and those are going to be like the high paid people who work at Google, at Facebook, who work at the automotive companies, who work in AI, um, which you're probably going to talk a little bit about. And then on the other hand, we have the jobs in the middle which are just going to be kicked out and then we have the jobs which will be very much devalued and which will have a lot or which then uh, will be paid not very much. So, and I believe that we're actually seeing part of that already. 
because um, right now we have the situation that, for example, in, in America, we have a pretty good economic growth. Uh, we have a very low unemployment, 4.3% or something like that, but um, the wage development is actually quite flat. And this is actually, maybe you know this, one of the factors that the Federal Reserve Bank, uh, which sets the, the interest rates, uh, looks at, which is the wage development. And they're saying, we're not going to raise the interest rate because wage development is not picking up. And uh, like the hourly wages. And um, this, I think, is already a consequence from the devaluation of work. A lot of people, take the example of somebody who works at McDonald's flipping burgers, they have exact processes. You can, I would say, without being discriminatory, you could put a monkey in there and train him to do the job. And yeah, it's, it's essentially, it's a very repetitive, very easy job to do. And so I think we're already seeing the consequences of what technology is doing to our jobs, to our job market, and that poses some questions I think we need to ask about society. Um, how are we going to live? How are we going to um, structure our welfare state? How are we going to have a lot of people who will be, have, or who will be making uh, not very much money along with the people who uh, don't have any work at all? How are we going to keep our um, uh, social, like, uh, I'm missing the word, social order, maintain social order, and, um, you know, maintain our civil society? And we need to, I think we need to ask those questions, and we need to ask now, because if we do, we can probably prevent some problems down the road in 10, in 20 years. Now, some, uh, some things which might be just a thought, this is like um, food for thought, basically. Um, answers to that might be an automation tax, that robots pay taxes for what they do, or have a very high um, inheritance tax, which might just, as an idea, be maybe even as high as 100%, just food for thought. Um, just to explore some ideas which might not be mainstream and where some people might be thinking they're very radical, but just to think them through and see what might be able or what we might be able to do to solve the problems which I think we will be facing. Now, one thing that we or I thought would be a nice idea would be to actually prepare some kids which are coming from an environment where, where um, well, I would say they don't have such a great outlook on a very steep career to enable them to maybe just be excited about technology and to teach them how to code. Now, I know some of you might be saying now that um, in the future, the simple task of coding will also be done by AI, and AI will write the code. And I think that's true. I think that might happen in 10 or 20 years. But until then, teaching kids how to code, teaching kids to get into technology, showing kids from Mittelschule, they don't have the option, at least not in this stage, to go to university. They will do an apprenticeship. Um, to show them a possible career ca uh, path where there's great demand on the labor market, at least right now, and at least for the next five to 10 years. And if from a class of 10 kids, I find one who is excited about coding, then my job is done with that class. Then I've reached my goal. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, so what we decided to do is we wanted to key, teach kids to code, to, uh, as I've said, create a, or to show them a career path. And second, also to hopefully increase social mobility for them, because also according to the uh, OECD, uh, Germany is one of the worst countries uh, amongst the member states uh, concerning social mobility. That means if you're coming from a working, uh, from a working household, your parents are just like uh, normal uh, blue collar workers, then there's a, a pretty low, sh low chance that you will go to university. If your parents are academics, then there's an over 70% chance that we will go to university. So there's a great difference there in the social mobility and to also maybe circumvent this barrier. Now what we do is, um, for now, we just volu voluntary work. It's like no profit, no money. We just go to schools, ask them, hey, um, do you want to uh, do a coding, uh, coding class with us? And um, then we just try to recruit volunteers, working uh, like young, uh, young professionals, students, 
to uh, go to these schools and to teach a class there. And what we do is we have a, a curriculum which was developed by an organization called Code Your Life, which is supported by Microsoft. So essentially Microsoft paid for it all and they developed the curriculum. And um, we teach that. It's eight sessions um, with 90 minutes per week. And we just try to teach them the basics, what's a variable, what's a loop. Um, and we try to do this in a fun way with like a turtle which runs around and, and who draw, which draws a line. And, and we try to teach them some very basic things and see if they're interested in it. And if they are, we are now actually also providing a follow-up class where, will we, uh, where we will be uh, developing a weather station with a little hardware board. It's called Calliope. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see what the kids will do with that, if they also like it, how they develop, and um, what's happening, or what's going to happen there. Yeah, so basically that's it. Um, I think I'm through. I have 55 seconds left. So, <laughs> either. <laughs>